Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, sorry for the change of time, but we'll just do it for today. Uh, I think we do have a couple of people not here. Um, I've recorded, Mia just joined, okay. Uh, Michael, thanks for submitting the homework, even in such like a little time. Um, so today, um, we're going to keep going on cadences because we're still having trouble uh, writing, uh, yeah, writing cadences. And today, I also want to go over identifying cadences as either perfect or plagal. It's all in the guidebook if um, you've like scanned over it. Uh, I'll explain in detail today as well. So, um, let's start with perfect cadences again, because like last week, from what I can tell, most of you were pretty good with plagal cadences. So, I'll go over all the rules for a perfect cadence again. One second, I'm just gonna readjust my tabs quickly. Ah, uh, there we go. This is annoying. Uh, ah, ah, uh, okay. So, perfect cadences. So, four steps to it. So, write your write your chord notes. That's the very first step. Um. So make sure that you know your core notes, or if you don't write them down, that will help you a lot. So, and then second step, bass sings the root of both chords. So Michael, uh, a mistake that you made, not to point, like not to draw attention to you, but a mistake you made in your homework was that, like you said, the bass doesn't sing the root of both chords. That's, um, yeah, that's not quite how, uh, you know, triads in four part vocal style work. So um, in four part vocal style, the bass always has to sing the root of the chord. So that means the bass is essentially allowed to like kind of jump around a bit while the other voices, that doesn't really apply. So, um, wait, can you guys see my screen? Okay, just checking. Um, yeah. So perfect cadences, first note, uh, first step, write down your first, write down your chord notes. Second step, uh, write down your bass line. Third step, leading note to tonic. Leading note to tonic is the most important thing in a, um, yeah, in a perfect cadences, in, in a perfect cadence. So try and make it so that the leading note to tonic is, um, yeah, try to make the leading note to tonic motif in the soprano because that's where it has the best resolving effect and generally sounds the best. So, um, and fourth step, uh, harmonize a note in common. So the note in common would usually be, um, so the note in common in a perfect hands would usually be the dominant of the scale. So um, if you look at these examples in C major, the note in common is G, the dominant of C major, and like just leave it in the same voice. And this step, I guess bonus one, is just harmonize what's left. Not the most important, but like, I mean, it is important, but like, you know, it's it should come naturally because like you just got to fill in the last note. Make sense? Uh, let's use my trusty uh, composing tool again. Seven. Uh, one, two, three, Seven. Okay. Can you guys see the, you know, the my composing program? Whatever. Um 
or sign the owner. Okay, there we go. Uh, first one's for Michael. Uh, Gracie. So your task is to write a perfect cadence in, oh, wait, I'll decide the scale after. Uh, Justin, Emma, Phoebe, uh, Mia, Eva. Okay, so that's your designated cells. I'll write like the steps down here for anyone who, so step one. Step one, write four notes. Step two, actually there would be a step five because you need to check for like, check they didn't, don't have consecutives and all that like, but if you make sure that all your voices are flowing smoothly, then consecutives shouldn't happen. So consecutives as in like, does anyone remember what consecutives are? Kind of, partly, not really. Um, right. Michael just answered on behalf of everyone. So what have consecutives is basically um, you have either fifths or octaves. Fourths sometimes apply, but usually they would be fine if um, you're careful with them. So usually fifths and octaves, they're present in the same voice, moving in the same direction. So that might sound a little confusing, but Michael, just quickly use your cell to write a perfect cadence. So what might happen? I do one in C major quickly. Oh, what the? Okay, never mind. Uh, so, uh, I had a break in a couple of uh, I'll try put it. Um, okay, so you realize that, um, oh wait, no, I accidentally. No, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> um, sorry, my bad. Okay. Oh, I'll put that E there. Okay, so. You can, you can see that since the voices aren't moving smoothly, there's consecutive octaves here. So they're present in the same voice. Um, sorry, could, could you guys hear the opera voice? Could you guys like hear like the opera voice thingy? <laughs> that, was, that was just weird. Cause like, um, for some reason this program, like, um, Probably because for like composing, uh, I don't know, just like to make, to let, to let you hear like how your melody actually sounds. I find it very annoying though. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, you can see that there's consecutive octaves present in the soprano and the bass, even though they're, they're technically two octaves apart, that still counts. So it's like, as long as there's the interval there, no matter if it's compound or simple, it's it counts. So there's an octave between the bass, or technically there's two octaves, as I just said. Um, there's, there's an octave between the bass and the soprano, and there's an octave between the bass and the soprano in the second chord, and they're both in the same voice, both in the soprano and the bass, and they're both moving in the same direction. They're both 
moving or the birds yeah the move the birds moving up so that's not allowed consecutive octaves not allowed so we can fix this as long as we make the voices flow smoothly like so please ignore the slug opera voice as michael so cleanly described it yep easy fix and now we've also um it also happens that we solved the oh, yeah oh my god how do i turn the slug opera off i'd like to know I don't even know how to use this program and I've been doing it for a long time. Just ignore it. Just try to ignore it. I hate it as well. Um, maybe I could try switching to like a piano, like soundtrack if it's hurting your ears too much. I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah, so now we fix the problem of the consecutive, like the consecutive. So um, what we've got now is that moves up, that goes up, but there's no octave between that. So that's fine. And so, so that's why I have to be really thorough when checking for consecutives, especially if voices are moving in like the similar direction. So. It's necessary to check between the alto and soprano and um, yeah, in the two chords because they're both moving in the same direction. If you realize, oh, okay, then that's not a fifth, that's a sixth, consecutive six are good. So then there's no need to worry about that. So, okay, does that make sense? So that's what consecutive fifths, consecutives are essentially. So the example I just gave was consecutive octaves, but remember that consecutive fifths are also not allowed. Oh my God, how do I get rid of the opera? It's so annoying, it's driving me crazy. Scott, okay, how do I... Uh, okay. What is happening? Oh, there we go. Quickly, uh, next. Okay, our this works. Getting rid of the stupid slug opera. Okay, I'll just try to line it up now. Okay, that's good enough. Um, yeah, this is for writing a perfect cadence. Sorry, this is for writing a perfect cadence in about vocal style and i want you to do it in a major uh let me drop key signature there we go do it in a oh great just decented and everything there we go so do it in a major i'll write the steps on the board also like a blur perfect cadences step one Oops. Step one, right chord notes. Step two, um, bass sings the root of each chord. Step three, um, leading note to tonic in soprano, preferably. Four, um, note in common stays the same, stays, stays, like stays still in the same voice. Five, there's a really step five, final checks. Okay, 
which include executives, um, voice ranges, etc. Okay. Uh, so the task is to write a perfect cadence in A major. Go. Perfect cadence in A major. So chord five to chord one. I remember that like uh, chord indications are written in Roman numerals. Just a quick reminder. But since I'm kind of writing them all in for you, you're welcome. Okay, everyone, remember your voice ranges. So Gracie, um, the bass can't sing that low. My best tip for writing like harmony or like just anything in four part vocal style is to keep the bass and the tenor spread well apart because remember that the bass is liable to keep jumping around and you don't want to like cross the tenor by acid. So remember that you can have a bass, you can have bass and tenor more than an octave apart, which is nice. Your mouse is blocking my A. Thanks. I'd hope that no one starts like drawing giant dots on the screen like what happened last week. <laughs> last week at the end of the lesson, it got crazy. Yes. <laughs> like that. And I forgot to stop the recording, which is... <laughs> um, which is embarrassing. So yes. People are going to see it online. When you say... um. It's lucky that nobody drew di giant dots on the screen. Everybody just be like, uh, here we go. Here we go again. Phoebe is currently AFK. Yeah, Phoebe is. She's not even there. Mm.
Marco? I think the most common misconception of four part vocal style writing is like people think they have to put like um, their chord notes in ascending order. That's just simply not true. You can put them any order you like, which is. Um, but the bass has to be like the thing. Yeah, the bass has to stay at the bass, but the other three notes you can put wherever you like. So that's, I think that's the most common misconception for um, four part writing. Mm. Is Lucas playing piano? Yes. And our doors aren't thick enough. Is is he loud? Yes. Get sick of doors. Hey, by the way, Louis, <laughs> uh, you might, you, uh, Louis, you might have to give me another free musicianship lesson this weekend. Yeah, okay, for sure. <laughs> You're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's cheating me out of musicianship lessons. <laughs> yeah, because I go ski with him. Yeah, I'm going this week. It's not like I'm not going this week, okay? <laughs> Why is this not working? Justin's done, by the way. Yeah, I'm looking at his right now. I'm done. What the heck? Where'd that giant line come from? I'll rub that <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, where did that giant I'll line come from? Okay. Um Justin probably just a, probably just like a mis probably just a mistake. Uh your stem like one of the stems look weird and one of the notes in the tonic triad is wrong. But other than that is fine. I'm uh, finished. Gracie, that's a little messy. Let me clean it up for you. Oh, yeah, the... Um, it's a piano now, not the opera voice. Which yeah, is but very the, annoying. Uh, yes, but like, um, now the stems are going to be the wrong way around. But when, when it was like in the opera, like opera style, um, the stems were like the right way. Mm. So, you can even, like switch it the other way, right? I can, but like that switches the whole chord the other way. So I'm just going to use semi breeze from, from now because. Okay. Okay, Gracie, I'll just clean this up for you. That's very messy. Yes. I think that's the. A... Oh, okay. Um, I'm just cleaning it up for her. Uh, yeah, Gracie, that's correct. Oh, Phoebe's back. By the way, just a quick trivia. So if that key signature wasn't there, so and I told you to write a perfect cadence in A minor, what extra accidental do you have to add? Just call it out. D sharp. F yes, sharp. and why is that? Because it's the leading note. Yes, and in in minor scales, you always have to raise the leading note. Very good. It's probably the most common mistake of like writing perfect cadences in like another key. By that I mean minor keys. Me, you're like, you're all the stems are the wrong way. <laughs> I can see that. Mm. I'm done. <laughs> then fix it. Michael, leading note to tonic. Um, 
Justin, that's good. Some of some the stems are the wrong way around. Emma, uh, yep, pretty good. Oops. Quick quiz, what's the relative scale of A major? C minor? No. Minor. Yeah, you went the wrong way around. So e you have minor. to count. No, you have to count a minor third down for the minor scale. F a minor. Minus F, F minor. Close. Almost. E minor. F sharp minor. So, um, I might have taught this in grade two, but like um, counting a minor third down from A is the same as counting a major six up from A and then inverting the octave. So um, might have taught that. But if not, just remember that like to go from a major scale to its relative minor, count three semitones. Well, it might be easier to count three semitones down. To go from a real if you go from a minor scale to its relative major, count three semitones up. Uh Phoebe consecutive fifths right here. Louie, I'm done. Don't erase it. I'm very tempted to erase the stems of your first one. <laughs> Why? Um, the wrong way around. Yeah, yes, it looks the wrong way around. <laughs> they were all the wrong way around. This one, this one. Just and this one. Oh, what about the stems? It's very annoying with the stems. No joke. Okay, uh, I'm Michael, done. good. Um, Mia, good. Justin, uh, yep, well done. Emma, good. And Diva's having some trouble. You all right? What are you doing? I'm drawing a smiley face. Okay. <laughs> you dumb. I don't look like. I don't, even know. I don't even know what it looked like. <laughs> what are you doing? I did like ovals and then stuff like that. You should know what I'm doing. It's a D face from Roblox. E. Okay, everyone's finished except for Aoife. Um, okay, I'll, I'll rub out like all the spare stuff. I'll, I'll rub out all the spare stuff from the <laughs> screen and I'll take a screenshot of this thing to like post it or something. Okay. Say cheese. <laughs> no, this is just, I'm taking this, I'm just taking the screenshot of the screen. There we go. Uh, no, wait, no. Sorry, Phoebe. Phoebe, you changed it. You've got overlapping voices now. The tenor is overlapping the bass. Could you fix that? Oh, no. And also, uh, you're leading her to tonic. It's there, but it's not in the same voice. So make, could you make sure it's in the same voice, please? Don't mind me. Mm, yes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. 
I'm just gonna casually uh censor that. <laughs> it's not even the right color. Okay, we're just waiting on Phoebe. Phoebe, no, the bass can't sing that low, unfortunately. So put the bass up. No, 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 no. Please no. <laughs> stop drawing that. Why? Accidentally rubbing out my. Why? I was going to take a screenshot of this to send to your parents. Fine, I'll raise it. Okay, Phoebe, um, you still haven't got your reading or tonic there. Can I draw one more smiley face? No. <laughs> Phoebe, the, the problem that you've got here is that the core notes aren't, that you still haven't got the right core notes. So, A, C sharp, E, A, and for the dominant triad and E G sharp B E. Look, what you're supposed to do here. Don't mind me drawing a fat smiley face. So Phoebe, look here, look carefully. So you have your base note done. That's very good. You're missing step three, which is that the leading note is supposed to sing the tonic. So you've got that. The note in common should be E. So we'll put that down. Oh, sorry, it's not E, it's um A, sorry, it's A. So put the note in common down. No, no. Oh, what I'm thinking, it's B. I'm so I'm so stupid today. I'm, I'm, I'm losing brain cells. The common note is um B. yeah. So the note in common is B, and put your final note down. Um, common note is A. B D F E. Okay, Phoebe, is that clear? Okay, me, I'm going to raise that now. And I'm taking a screenshot of this. Save, awesome. So, I'll stop sharing now. And um, your work is using your own. So on your own now, you're going to compose a perfect cadence in C minor. Compose a perfect cadence in C minor. So on your own this time. Slug opera. Mm. Yes. It sounded horrific. What are we doing now? So, 
a perfect cadence in C minor on your own. Does anyone want me to put the step-by-step -step procedure in the chat? There might be something that I might need to ask you during the private lesson. Yeah, sure. So once you're done, like as always, just hold it up like for me to see. Uh, Mia, Michael, and Justin, you're going to have to remove your virtual backgrounds for that, unfortunately. There's the Alex Zoom in the background. Yes. We left. Baldy's basic be like. Baldy's basic. Can I make a comment? On oh, what? Stop saying Baldy's basics. Racy, um. Uh... Yep, good job. Brace, your next challenge is a perfect cadence in E minor. Michael, I can't see that. You're forgetting an accidental somewhere, just saying. Me done. Okay, I have to quickly check. I'm done. All of you are forgetting an accidental. What? Uh, there's a minor scale. Minor scale, what do you have to do? The minor scale. Louie, I'm done. A second. That's the wrong accidental. Emma, that's the right accidental. Michael, I'm just trying to get around to everyone. Um, 
Nope, that's the wrong accidental. It's a minus scale. What do you have to do to the mm, in the minor scale? To the leading note. Yes. You have to put it. Emma, you got it right, by the way. You have to put it down a semitone. Oh my God, Gracie's already done two perfect cadences. Yes, Gracie, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Louie, do I do the next one? Yeah, E minor. Okay. BB, you don't have to do E minor because I want to do something else like after perfect cadences. Beef, which no, I said a perfect cadence in E minor, E for elephant. So in minor scales, um, especially when you're writing in four part harmony, you always have to raise the leading note. So, um, for example, um, no, not really for that, like in any minor scale, um, the leading note always has to be just like raised no matter what. Um, Justin, check for your leading note to tonic. Where is that? Louis, I'm done. Mia, let me see. Yes. Good. Oh, wait a second. There's, um, yeah, can I say that again? Yeah, um in the second, um in the in the tonic triad, is that a I should be a B in the soprano. Oh. Is that better? Yes. Brilliant. Wait, what's after E minor? Uh yeah, just just take a break. Oh, okay. Baby, are you done? Justin, leading note to tonic. So leading note of C minor, which is? B flat. B, B natural because yeah, B C natural. minor. Um, bring it up to C. Okay. So in, in any voice, B natural to C, okay? 
um, Emma and Jay. Uh, yes. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Uh, you doubled the wrong note um, for, yeah, Emma, you doubled the wrong note for the E minor. So make sure you're doubling the root, not like some other. Um, okay, now the core notes are wrong. So Justin, where you went Ori is, um, wait a second, key signature. To Phoebe, are uh, leading a tonic for you as well. So, for both of you, um, it's distracting. I'll just delete that. Um, first, bass notes. Second, leading note to tonic. The leading note of C minor has to be raised by a semitone. Leading of C minus B flat raised by a semitone becomes B natural, B natural to C. Okay, and what's the note in common between the two chords? Phoebe, Justin, this is especially for both of you. Uh, I think G. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, you put G in the same voice and keep it on moving. And your final note, it would be D and we'll make that step up. Okay. Phoebe, does that make sense? Yeah, I'll go over another one in C minor again. Bass note. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Bass note, um, leading note to tonic. I'll put it in the tenor this time. Okay. The note in common, G. And. Make sense? So, I'll go over like the steps again. Um, Step one, bass sings the root. Step two, leading note to tonic. I put it in the tenor. Step three, note in common. Step four, just whatever's left. Okay. Okay, moving on. So, one of the main exam questions in grade in the grade three theory paper is to identify a cadence as either perfect or plagal. So you might be wondering like, how does that work? Well, it is like slightly difficult if you don't know how to like, um, you don't like get get it. Um, so what's, what's kind of difficult here is that like both chords end on the tonic triad. So you can't really look at the tonic triad for reference. Instead, you gotta decide whether the first chord is um is it the dominant triad or the subdominant triad um i'll put an example on the board wait a second all these got a bunch of just remove all that um wait a second right there we go so i'm gonna do it in e minor since that's the key that we were just going in so oh what am i doing uh And I should get the shop and 
E minor. Okay, there you go. So you can kind of tell. So first, let's listen to the difference between a. Um, you know, I'm going to do this in E major since like. It sounds a lot clearer. Um, no, no, I don't want to. I don't okay. So that the first one I'll just tell you is a perfect cadence in E major. The second one is a plagal cadence in. E major. So, um, Okay, so here we have a perfect cadence and a plagal cadence in E major. First, I want you to listen to the effect orally, so by ear. First one's perfect. Okay, next one's plagal. What is what oral effect do you notice as like in the difference? Which one's like a little less resolving, firstly? Gracie? The, the perfect is stronger than the plagal. Yep, that's so. And why is that? Just because um, there's that, that leading note to tonic, which makes it strong. So what the plagal cadence is mostly used for is um like does anyone here go to church services no <laughs> everyone's here very sacrilegious um but like even if you don't you might have heard like um how like churches kind of end some like the i don't know like the church hymns with like plagal like oh um, that's kind of kind of symbolic of church music. So, so plagal think amen, and um, perfect. Just think of like that leading note to tonic, which the with the really strong resolving effect, like okay. Okay, so now how to identify a perfect cadence from a plagal cadence visually. So uh, I'll just quickly yeah. delete. Oh, no. oh, never mind. I'll just um, put that back. So looking at these two cadences, um, they both end on chord one, which is what makes this difficult. But um, observe that um, obviously the perfect cadence is chord five to chord one. The play cadence is chord four to chord one. And since the bass has to sing the root of each chord, so that means as long as you can figure out the scale correctly, you should have no trouble figuring out whether this note is the dominant of the scale or the subdominant of the scale. Make sense? So your clue in identifying whether a cadence is perfect or plagal is to just look at the root of the first chord. And usually the, um, the key would be really easy to tell because you can just look at 
uh, the tonic triad, which obviously the root is the tonic. So you can easily tell what the key is. And then it's just simply the matter of figuring out whether this, um, you know, whether the root of the first chord is the dominant or the subdominant of that key. And what makes it easy? So um, to figure out the key of like, if a, if a cadence is given to you and you want to figure out the key, look at two things. First, key signature. That lets you narrow it down to like two keys already, just the major and its relative minor. And then to tell whether, you know, it's the major or its relative minor, um, so if there's, if it's the relative minor, then there'll definitely be like an accidental for like, like perf if there's a perf, if it's a perfect cadence, there's, there'll be an accidental with the leading note. So then you'll already know it's a perfect cadence. If it's a plagal cadence, I mean, like, just look at the root and you can obviously tell the scale using the root of the second chord. Make sense? So um, we have two minutes left. Let's do a plagal cadence very quickly in, um, in B flat major. So uh, do you want to do it together or? Maybe we'll do it individually because I want to see you guys all get the hang of cadences. So a plagal cadence in B flat major. Plagal in B flat major. So chord chord four to chord one. As soon as you finish and you show me, you can head off. So is everyone aware that I've kind of like slightly changed the nature of like our revision lessons? So instead of like having a revision lesson, like every so often, there's going to like only going to be one revision lesson at the end of like, you know, every grade. And then like to also help with the examination, uh, there's going to be like an exam conditions lesson where it's just you with your camera down. I'm just going to be just looking at you doing a paper under exam conditions. So that's just a little heads up. Someone got nervous. <laughs> oh, in case anyone's interested, I'm pretty sure like the time you're given for the examination in like, you know, the actual AMEB examination is about, I think it's 1.5 or two hours. So um, I'm thinking like, if I do get like an actual test paper for you guys to do, I'll cut out a couple of questions so we can fit it in the time. But honestly, I don't think that like, no one really goes to like that time limit of, no, no one actually reaches the time limit. So you never really see anyone running out of time in an AMEB theory exam. 
because they really give you ample amount of time to complete all the questions. So it's not really, time is not really of the essence here. So remember, as soon as you finish your plagal cadence in B flat major, you're good to go. So uh, after you show me that is. I'll also write down a step-by-step -step for plagal cadences, which is um, so plagal cadences. First step is to again, to write the core notes and annotate them. Bracy, uh, okay, Gracie, you're good to go. And um, Emma, you're good to go. Bye, guys. So, step two. Bye. Base by basing the root. Step three. Note in common. And step four. Everything else steps down. And step five just final checks. Bell consecutives and court ranges. So that's in the chat for you. Mia, um, it's like uh, there's a couple of wrong notes in the chord. Can you check that? Like, you know, your chord notes are correct. The bass notes are not correct. And remember, technically, there's not supposed to be any voices like stepping up in a plagal cadence. So, me, that's for you. There's technically not supposed to be any voices stepping up in a plagal cadence. Plagal cadences, all the voices step down, except for the bass on some occasions. And also, speaking about bass, your bass note is incorrect. Well, at least one of them is. Phoebe, um, so close. So, um, could you check that none of the voices are overlapping? And technically, I don't understand how you got like a second between two chords because that's not really, uh, Mia, your bass, check your bass. You know, funny scene, like a lot of people, like when I was in my old school, like basically none of the people knew music and um, the teacher was teaching us some like basic music theory and people kept saying the bass clef, like when they were, when they were speaking to the teacher, they were like, um, bass clef. And I was like, oh my God, it's driving me crazy. Bass clef, bass clef. <laughs> it's not how you say it. <laughs> Oh, 
base club, not yeah, it's back. bass club. And then there's like so you know the like the double bass, like you know, the string instrument, like people yeah. just usually just call it bass, right? Yeah. So um once um this happened just like a year ago, like last year. So um in my school people were doing a presentation on so one group was doing a presentation on string instruments, and when they got to double bass, they just kept saying like the bass has four strings and it's tuned in four. Oh my god, it was so funny. The bass, the double bass, or just the bass is tuned in four. And oh my god, it drove me crazy. It also drove the music teacher crazy because oh my god. the presentation was actually really good, but just because they kept saying bass, the music, they got like a B for their presentation or something. So that's something really funny for you. Wow. I'm just gonna me I, I give up. The bass note is E. It's not. Why do you, what I I don't know where you got C from. And Michael I wrote just, B for the bass. I wrote B for some reason. You did no, you didn't. Um, uh, Michael, the bass can't sing that. Oh no, you sorry, screw it out, screw it out. Okay. Um, uh, could you move it over a bit? Yeah, there we go. Um, okay, so remember that none of the voices in a plagal cadence should be stepping up. And, uh, Mia, what am I looking at? So, Michael, none of the voices in your plagal cadence should be stepping up. And Mia, your bass is still wrong. Did you say E? Which Phoebe, is... move that, move that alto. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, you're showing the right one now. I don't know where that F sharp came from, so I'm just gonna pretend that it's not there. And um, why is your, so your soprano is stepping up, which shouldn't be allowed. So, uh, in your tonic chord, just move the soprano down to the alto and just like switch the soprano and the alto around, basically. Mia, this is on it. That's the bass. Now go off that. <laughs> you can't see it, you realize. You know. Oh. <laughs> Great. That's the bass. Now follow that. Um, Justin. Um. So the tenor and the soprano is leaping. And also that's consecutive fifths. Michael, uh, I mean, that's very messy. And your note, your, your note, is, your note in common is not staying in the same voice. Um, May, could you move that up a bit? There we go. Uh, yes, finally well, correct. Mia is overjoyed. Bye. Bye. See you on yeah. that yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Do you guys want to complete this for homework? Because we've gone 10 minutes over time. No way. Okay, um, 
the bass is wrong, Phoebe, and that's resulted that like all the voices are stepping up, which is not allowed. Justin, the dog. Michael, uh, uh Patterson, Michael, good job. Phoebe, so I'll go over how to perf how to do playing of hands again. So you've got your base note, and now you need your note in common. So what's the note in common between the subdominant triad and the tonic triad? What note do they have in common? So the chord notes are EGB for the subdominant triad and BDF for the tonic triad. So what notes do they have in common? Or what note do they have in common? B, yep, B or B flat, yep. So keep that in the same voice, okay? And now you have two other, um, you have two more chord notes. So you need G and E in the subdominant triad, yes? So you simply have to make both of them step one note down, like that, okay? Make sense now? Do you want to go? <laughs> okay. Bye, baby.